welcome to D-Lab everyone. Today I'm going to give you a guided tour of an extremely rare ham transmitter built in 1953. This is a Sonar model SRT120. It's about 100 watts AM, 120 watts CW. I just opened it up. It's pulled out of the case. I've got everything that came with this transmitter. I've got the matching VFO. It actually has the real hard to find matching power supply. So let me show you what it is, show you what I think it needs, but either way, you get to see a real cool piece of history. So while we're reviewing this little transmitter, I'm also going to test my Rode wireless microphone on stand instead of wearing it as a lapel mic. I found that the response is muddy and I believe it's because it's on my chest and you're hearing vibrations, right? You're not hearing the direct audio coming from my mouth. So we're going to try this with a mic on a stand. You guys can tell me if that improves the audio quality. Okay, here it is. The SRT120. Sorry about the glare from the sunshine in the back. Can't do much about it. But it's a very basic transmitter. It covers 80 through 10 meters, but there is a spare position, they say, so you could add like 160 or maybe 11 meters. I don't know. Here's your metering switch. Cool meter with their logo in it. Antenna tuning, plate tune. You got a switch here for either VFO or one of two crystals, which plug in here. This PA switch is kind of a mystery. There's all kinds of cautions in the manual about make sure that this PA switch is on before you activate push to talk. In the power supply is a push to talk relay which turns on the high voltage. So I'm guessing if you have the PA off and you activate high voltage you're going to get a spark show and that unfortunately has happened to this transmitter. I'll show you that in a minute. This is your power on and microphone gain for the audio, which is via a pair of 6L6s and push-pull. And there's the modulation transformer, big monster triad. The output tube is a 5894. Kind of reminds me of the John Hancock building, right, with the two little pillars sticking up. Pretty cool. So we'll move around. To the side of the chassis because there's some interfacing here. See their little ID plate? This one is serial number 3598. This is your RF output, microphone input with the push to talk. And this interface cable goes over to the PS150 power supply. This is the input for the VFO. And this VFO is pretty unique. It is not a powered VFO. It's simply variable capacitors and they have circuitry in this transmitter that uses this thing like a variable crystal. Who knows if it works? If it does, it'd be wild. But I bet you this piece is probably the rarest of all. All right, we'll keep swooping around here. This hunk of copper that you see with the vents is actually the cage for the RF output tube. I've already removed that. Let me give you a good view of the top of the chassis. Pretty compact construction. Kind of reminds me of a multi-LMAC type of system, right? Because multi-LMAC also did not have their high voltage power supply in the transmitter. I think this was because they would also run these things mobile. I found some information that Sonar made a dynamotor power supply for this transmitter and it said because of its small convenient size you can bolt it to the firewall of your car. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so here is that power supply that I was telling you about. This thing is super rare and guess what? It actually is operational but I do not like how it operates. I did some research on this. It's kind of goofy, not really the way I would design a power supply. So I've got it up my sleeve 
to redesign it. So here are the five U4s that are wired in parallel to handle the high voltage current. This is your master power transformer and your choke. In a minute I'll flip these things over and you can see them bottom side. Here is the matching cabinet. Got a little flapper door here so you can have access to the side panel for your interfacing to the power supply and of course your antenna. So before I disconnect the power supply, I want to show you that yes, she does light up, including the final output tube. I'm just going to check the filament circuits here. I will not activate the high voltage. Let me show you why. So when I removed that copper RF cage to see the final output tube, I had a little bit of a surprise. Take a look at these coils caps underneath. A little bit of corrosion, but the thing that really alarmed me is the band select switch. So I can turn it. It's kind of stiff, but you can tell there's been all kinds of arcing and that contact right there is blasted. So it's unusable. I'm guessing that this happened because somebody activated the PA switch after the high voltage was on and the high voltage wanted to go around and take care of some things and it did. This coil also going to the output tube plates has really been baking as well as a little RFC choke underneath of it. So the RF cage here is going to have to be rebuilt before I dare apply high voltage. So let me give you a different perspective on the band selector switch. The caps, this corrosion, and other things don't bother me at all. But this switch is a major problem, okay? There's actually two wafers, and they're ceramic. And you can see that they're pretty contaminated. There's no way I can repair this. I thought, man, what am I going to do? I can get any part in this transmitter except for that switch. So I got the bright idea to take a look on eBay and sure enough I found these wafer switches. I brought the transmitter in, set it next to the PC and I kept looking back and forth. I was like there's no way this can be the same switch because this has two commons on the center ring and of course you got the one contact right for each band. It was identical. It's actually a model 2500 Central Lab switch. Yes, I ordered them. So now the major hurdle should be over. Well, here's the bottom side of the main transmitter. Looks like these caps have been replaced. There is the gigantic, I think it's a 50 watt resistor that steps down the 600 volts plate to around 300 volts to operate the rest of the circuitry. Everything in here actually looks pretty clean. I can see these resistors have been changed. That one. But very little maintenance. I was actually pretty surprised when I opened up and took a look. And I do have the bottom cover. Okay. Like I said, this thing was 100% complete when I got it. So it's very restorable. I'm pretty excited about the project, but I can't tell you when I'll actually get to it. I just need to do this initial inspection. Alright, now to the power supply. Like I said, this power supply only generates 600 volts or so DC. All right? Somebody has recapped it in the past. This is the push to talk relay. Right? So when you key your mic, this guy pulls in, turns on the 5 to 600 volts that comes off of this power supply. In the past, no doubt, something exploded. Probably one of the old original caps. Left a nice witness mark. But it didn't seem to hurt the power transformer. That obviously should be cleaned up because that's a carbon path waiting to happen. Here's your fuse holder. Of course, line cord, and you've got your octal plug that goes to the transmitter. 
But after reviewing this power supply, to tell you the truth, I'm not very comfortable with it. I mean, it's nice that I have it, but I think that they could have done this a little bit differently and a little bit safer to avoid the damage that you just saw in the transmitter. So I am in the works of developing a new power supply for the SRT120. As I said before, this is going to be a long-term project. It's not going to happen anytime soon because I have many other things in the works. But I just wanted to give you guys the pleasure of seeing this beauty. And eventually, we'll have a restoration video. So there's a good dose of vintage radio for you, huh? It makes me want to go out and fire up like an old dusty radio in my basement and just smell the aroma of things baking off of the hot tubes with a glass of wine, of course. But this SRT120, back in the day, in 1953-ish, the kit sold for 198 bucks. The assembled factory model was 279 bucks. So is that like the price of a car? I don't know, maybe you guys can chime in and tell me. But this project will happen, you guys will see this restored, and I guarantee you, I'm gonna put it on the air because I want people to say, what the heck are you running? That sounds great. At least I hope it sounds great. It's a plate modulated transmitter. It just needs a little love from D-Lab Electronics. So when I get it ready, I'll do a follow-up. Hope you enjoyed it.